So I just watched a fantastic film uh, recently. It's called Moon Point, and it's heading to theaters February 3rd. It's starting at the AMC in Toronto. And I have here today Paula Brancati, which is our, our leading lady of the film. Um, tell us a little bit about the film Moon Point, Paula. Yeah, um, so it's pretty much about a 24-year-old a ambitionless dude named uh, Daryl, and um, I think he sort of represents what a lot of, you know, early 20-somethings are feeling, sort of not being in high school, you know, that post-secondary education thing is done, and now it's that what what do I do now with my life feeling? And uh, and so he's sort of trying to figure himself out, and in the midst of all this, finds out that his, his uh, elementary school love is shooting the movie in the town over, so... He gears he'll throw all his things there and and head off on a road trip to find her. Um, and so he hooks a, a wagon on the back of his his friend Seymour there, and they meet my character Kristen. Um, and the three of us kind of travel off on this crazy adventure to to rekindle this love. Um, and it's a really sweet movie. And I actually read your review that that I, I guess uh, I saw one. Did. Um, and I was happy to, to hear that it, it gave a, it was a good response to the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was thoroughly charming and um, and really, Great. really reached a younger audience, which I thought was fantastic because we don't get a lot of that in Canadian films. So I know, I agree. I think it kind of speaks to different ages, which is great. Um, so tell me, how uh, how did you get attached to the project? Um, well, I actually read really early versions of the script, um, like three years ago. Sean Cisterna and I worked together on a kids' show, uh, my first professional project actually when I was nine, called Ricky's Room. And, uh, we had stayed in touch. And he asked me to, to shoot sort of like a test, uh, scene for the project, uh, a few years ago. And then it all happened very quickly when the final script came out. Um, I guess it was over a year ago in the fall. Um, I received the new script. Sean told me they were going to camera in two weeks, asked me if I was interested in the part, and, and the script has evolved and come to a really great place, and I feel like work he and Rob Lazar did together. They have a really good relationship. Rob's our writer. Um, and they created this really sweet script that I think, you know, is super relatable. It was very exciting for me to play a character that was actually my own age. That's very rare, surprisingly. Uh, generally, you're either playing younger or, you know, in the cases of other practices, I've done as played as 30, and I'm actually 22, so it was just very exciting to come onto something saying, you know, uh, my own age, and knowing that we would be ad-libbing and improv that was very attractive to me. Um, so tell me about the character Kristen. What type of a person is she, and what is she looking for in life? Mm -hmm. Well, we meet Kristen at a really interesting time. Um, where she starts literally running away from this awful relationship back home. And it just, it just, that's the kind of person she is that she hops into a wagon with these two strangers, these two guys she meets on the side of the road, um, because she wants to get as, as far away from it as possible. Um, so I think we're meeting her at a sort of crossroads and she's, she's, you know, unhappy with some of the choices she's made and she's very, um, sarcastic and, and sharp and witty and, and that kind of evolved too on set. I feel like the other great part about shooting this is like meeting Kyle and Nick and, and us having um, like an immediate chemistry. I feel like that really translated to camera and um, kind of snowballed as we shot. Um, and that was really fun. And, and I feel like for Kristen, it's sort of her discovery. Like she's hanging out with these two guys who teach her a lot about herself. And she sort of starts realizing what she wants in her relationship, what she, the negative things she thinks about herself, you know, um, she has a lot of self-esteem issues that I think she hides with this sort of, like, abrasive other exterior. Um, and I liked all the colleagues in the character. Like, there were there's a lot of funny uh, comedic moments, and and then there are alternately a lot of, like, dark sort of dramatic moments. So, uh, you know, it's rare that you get a character with that kind of arc, um, you know, in a two-hour movie. Um, is that one of the appeals for being in an independent film is, as you'd mentioned, that kind of collaboration, uh, an opportunity to uh, to do things that are ad-libbed and a little less, a uh, little bit more improvised and a little less structured, but also allowing you a, a good, solid character development? 
Mm-hmm, totally. I mean, especially coming from network television, I have spent most of my work in TV and, and, you know, absolutely love being on an, an Apple process. And, you know, there's absolutely a difference, though, in that you can't veer far from the script. Um, there are a lot of notes. There's a lot of restrictions. So it's very freeing to come to set and just be told to sort of, yeah, like, you know, let's work on the scene. Let's sort of see where it takes us. Let's banter. Um, and, and those are some of my favorite uh, moments in the movie watching, knowing where we sort of took it from one place on the page and brought it in a different direction. And, um, yeah, and like you said, I, yeah, it was definitely attractive for me to, to know I would be coming to work and, and not knowing what's going to happen in the day. It's very cool. Um, it's frightening, too, mm-hmm. but um, I love kind of having butterflies in my stomach and not knowing, you know, what the location is going to be like, and, and that's a very unique working environment um, that I really, really enjoyed, and it's certainly, um, I guess it's unique to independent filming. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, that connection that the three of you had made, um, Kyle Mack and mm-hmm. Nick McKinley, your uh, your male counterparts, and and that really did translate to the screen. And what I loved, oh, good. what I loved about that was that you were all you all liked each other so much. You really had no idea where this script was going. At the end of the day, you didn't know. Who was going to end up with who? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, you had this great connection between Daryl and Kristen, and yet, you know, he he by by nature is somebody who likes to bail on people when you know when it becomes important. Yeah. So you're like, and then he's off doing this grand gesture for this girl from high school, and really the send up is is that this relationship is you know, that he's cultivating with Kristen could become something more serious. But Totally. Yeah, I, I really liked, I loved the ending because I didn't see it coming, and I really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a big goal, goal to read. So, um, but um, I, I liked how this wasn't an easy rom-com because everybody liked each other. Everybody really actually got along with each other very well. So you didn't know, oh, well, those two, they're fighting a lot, so they'll get together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, thank you. I'm I'm really pleased to hear that translated to screen. And um, I, think, I think we didn't even, I sort of, you know, reading the reading script, we didn't really know which which relationship the bread made on camera. Um, I too felt like it was really interesting to see Chris, like Chris character, um, creepy bonds with the guys and two very different kinds of bonds. Um, and even though Daryl, you know, definitely has some flaws and is selfish and makes these sort of huge errors and it hurts people that he cares about, I think that's very honest. Like it feels very, very. 23 or 20 something, you know, where, where people do that. And, um, yeah, I, I asked, like, I love, love working with Pack. And I think even in the aftermath, like, the fact that it was, it was such a challenging shoot, just, you know, location wise and dealing with, with just the, the budget restraints that, but it was so much fun. And the fact that, that now that it's all over, it's been, you know, a year since it's been done, but we've all, we've traveled together across. Canada to bring it to festivals and we're hanging out and doing crafts and I feel like that, that's amazing that that can happen that you you guys you can go through this this really uh, significant shoot and then you know still really enjoy each other afterwards. I, I kind of am really confused by something and this is maybe something that you will okay. have you will have an insight into. Um, okay. You've done a lot Wait of. On me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Um, for a lot of uh, what surprised me is, is you've done a lot of, of television, Canadian television, which is hugely mm-hmm. popular. And yet, when it comes to Canadian films, there's like this massive disconnect with audiences. And yet, we're telling the same types of stories. Like, Canadian films are not that far, you know, estranged from what's being told in, in, uh, on Canadian television shows. What, why, yeah. do you, why do you think there's this disconnect? Why are tele- the television shows not just really popular in Canada, but internationally? And we still find the film industry quite, you know, fledgling and struggling. Such an interesting question. Wow. Um, and a really good one. You know, I'm with you there. Um, I'm confused by that kind of disconnect. Um, and just even in seeing how difficult it is to get a Canadian independent feature made. I mean, it's possible if doing, uh, if nothing else, doing one point has shown me that 
you can really get your own projects made in this country um, based on your connections within the industry alone and sort of networking. Um, everyone is very willing to help each other, which is so uh, wonderful, and I think it's really refreshing and inspiring. Um, I, I know it, it is, it's confusing to me as well because we have a lot of great Canadian TV that, that the state uh, is really responding to, and, and worldwide there's a huge response. I mean, Degrassi and Being Erica are so popular all over the world. Uh, Degrassi in particular is just kind of its own phenomenon, um, and, and the reason people are so into it, I think what they know is it's Toronto-based, um, you know, they almost have Toronto actors, and, and seeing how shows like Flashpoint even, you know, they have such a following in the States. So, yeah, it is, it is so interesting that Canadian films uh, sometimes don't get that same kind of head. And I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because we, we, maybe, maybe, maybe we, we need to find the right, the teams, the right script. No, I don't know. I think there's some beautiful work coming out of Canada. I think we have some amazing filmmakers. I mean, who are, who are, you know, very popular. We have Cronenberg and Sarah Pauly, but um, I'm not sure why the connect part of it might be, might be budget too. I feel like it's difficult to get things, even though you can spend your minute and make a great movie, um, it's hard to sort of get it promoted and, and the marketing and um, in terms of scope, I don't think it's comparable to some of the budgets in the state, fortunately. So that's why we're really, I think, we're fortunate to be in a time where there's a lot of Internet resources where we can be promoting things on Facebook and Twitter and doing sort of grassroots promotion. I think that's where, where we'll, we'll really uh, get lucky, hopefully. You know, I don't know if you agree, but I feel like maybe that will be the asset. Maybe that will kind of um, get Canadian movies out there more. I hope it changes. I really do. It's that marketing element that really has a, a lot to do with these. There are great, amazing films being made uh, right now that, I mean, even in the last five years, that kind of growth. And, and there is this nice grassroots uh, filmmaking that's going on right now where, you know, totally. you, you can't maybe get the funding all from one place or one avenue. So there's a real kind of, you know, let's pool our resources. And it's the same with the social media and connecting with audiences. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's pool our resources and see what we can come up with so I think it's a really exciting time it's just it is it is trying to figure out where that disconnect comes from and sometimes you know an independent production will have more of an advantage than less of an advantage because oh, totally. it understands about that that social community online Absolutely. I feel like they, they're forced to think creatively, like independent filmmakers and those projects. You're forced to think creative marketing. And I also feel, especially in traveling with Moonpoint and seeing the response um, all over Canada that we've gotten, I think people like seeing, you know, that underdog, you know, win. I think we've been calling it, um, like, Abby and, and Christian Penza and Sean. They've been calling it the little film that I think it's such a good way to describe it because I think people are very excited once they see it and they hear about the budget. I think they're so impressed because, you know, I, I didn't even really know uh, what a typical budget for, for an independent movie would be, but I was shocked to hear ours was considerably less and, uh, and to see that we could still make a, a fabulous product. Um, I think that that's really inspiring. I think that uh, resonates with audiences, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, I I wanted to know you seem to have such a positive response to how how it was on on the film. I have I have two very imperative questions. The first okay. one <laughs> The first one was the wagon looked painful and I can't imagine it <laughs> I can't imagine it for a month. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel like you're the only person who said that. Maybe, maybe perhaps because you're a woman, maybe you think about being squished in there. I don't know. I feel like the guys are like, what? why would you be uncomfortable? It's fine. It's fine. Um, yes, it was absolutely uncomfortable. But perhaps it was, I think it lent itself to us bonding so quickly. Cause you know, you're squished in there for hours. Um, and almost in like, in a very symbolic way on our final day of shooting, we went back and reshot a couple of things. And added added a few little inserts. The, the wagon just started. We were, we were driving back to to our cars in the wagon, like getting pulled back. We started hearing some pawing, and we're like, "What's that?" We see like screws coming loose, <laughs> and literally the wagon <laughs> fell apart. It's like it is just met its end. And uh, that thing can carry a lot of a lot. Of weight. I couldn't believe it, but uh, yeah, it's a little squishy. You're yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, the second question I had was because you enjoyed your, your time so much on the set, are you looking to do more uh, independent projects or Canadian films generally? Like, is it, are you shifting a little bit away from television or is there a mixture of both you'd like to do now? Yeah, it's such a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love, I would absolutely love to do both. I think, I think there, it's an exciting time in TV right now as well, seeing all of these great cable uh, television shows being made on HBO um, and AMC and all of that. There's some great work for women right now. Um, that being said, I've also read fantastic uh, scripts for independent projects that really excite me um, that I would love, love to be a part of. And I think I, I'm also going to L.A. in a little bit and, and doing the pilot season, auditioning. So um, I'm very open to sort of uh, finding exciting projects in different mediums. I think that's, that's interesting to me. But um, being a part of Moonpoint and that being my first film, um, I love being part of something where the character is only living for two hours. You know, it's, it's a different process than TV. You have all your information up front, and, of course, the discoveries you, you find along the way on set, but it's a working process uh, in terms of creating a character and one that I really enjoyed. So I would love to uh, expand more and do more film, and, and there are definitely uh, a lot of, like we said, a lot of great movies being made. So if I could have the pleasure of even auditioning for them, that would be great. Fantastic. And I kind of have to ask this because the film is a romantic comedy and it's being mm -hmm. launched around Valentine's Day. Are you a shameless romantic? Shameless romantic? I think I should say, I think I'm going to say, yeah. I mean, like, I, I am one who waits for the epic kiss at the end of a romantic comedy in a television show. I wait for those two leads to to get their makeout on, you know, which sounds super creepy, but I, I don't think it's creepy. I think it's like I just really invest in the stories, you know, like I I absolutely do. And, and in real life, I mean, what girl isn't, isn't uh, at, the, at the core of the most romantic, right? Yeah. We all like a little chivalry. We all like some flowers being taken by surprise. I feel like uh, I don't think chivalry said, I don't believe that. My daughter is saying that. I feel like it still exists and, uh, yeah, I think I think this movie is perfect at uh, date night. In fact, it should be an early Valentine's Day present to your Twitter girlfriends. Take them to see Moon Point. That's yeah. what I'll say. Well, thank <gasps> you so much for doing the interview. It's been absolutely delightful. Thank you. It's so nice talking to you. Moonpoint heads to the AMC Theatre in Toronto from February 3rd to the 9th and will be rolling out across Canada after that. It is up to Canadian audiences to search out our great Canadian independent films like Moonpoint as they can often have short theatrical releases. Check back on the Moonpoint Facebook or our Press Plus One Canadian Film section at www.pressplusnumeral1.com slash Canadian hyphen film.